My name is Richard Glasson. It's spelled G-L-A. I'm here today in opposition to Senate Bill 354 because we're not supposed to be lawyers. We're supposed to be acting as judges, not as In the last 20 years, only 15 non-attorney judges have been written up by the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline as compared to 55 lawyer judges. Uh, these non-lawyer judges are capable and professional. Leads, that begs the question, if there's not a problem, why are we trying to find a solution? All right, we'll go ahead and open up the hearing on the next bill on the agenda, which is Senate Bill 354. Welcome our esteemed chair to the table. Good afternoon, thank you. For the record, my name is Melanie Scheibel. I am the state senator from District 9 in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I am happy to be presenting SB 354 to you today. It is a um, short bill, and in summary, what it does is it requires justices of the peace to pass an exam called the multi-state professional responsibility examination. And um, I want to explain a little bit more about what the bill does as well as the purpose of the bill. And um, I think that my, my colleague Elliot Malin is here to, uh, to present with me and he can also provide a little bit of context. So. Here in the state of Nevada, um, you are, have all become familiar with our court system if you weren't already. We have justice courts um, within the district court system. There's a justice court which handles um, small claims, misdemeanors, and the preliminary hearings for felony cases. Um, so all criminal cases uh, of a felony nature go through a justice court. In a justice court, the judge who sits and presides is called a justice of the peace. A justice of the peace represents the township that they live in, um, which in Nevada um, isn't necessarily a town in the way that we think of it, um, like Las Vegas or Reno or Elko or Carlin, although it can be. A township is a legal designation within a county. It's a region of a county is a township. And the justice of the peace sits in the township and presides over the justice court. So that justice of the peace, like I said, hears all of the felony cases at the initial arraignment, at the preliminary hearing stage, before it is bound over to district court where someone would be tried in front of a jury. Justices of the peace also oversee misdemeanor violations, um, including bench trials for those misdemeanors. And justices of the peace oversee the small claims courts, um, certain eviction courts, and other, uh, other proceedings depending on the location where they are. For example, in an area that has a municipal court, the municipal court might handle certain proceedings that in a different area, the justice of the peace would handle. So in Nevada, unless you live in a very populated area within a township that has over 100,000 residents, you do not have to be an attorney to be a justice of the peace. This was a provision of the Nevada Revised Statutes that was changed in the last 20 years. It used to be that you had to be an attorney to be a justice of the peace. This bill is not intended to require all justices of the peace to be attorneys. Let me repeat that. This bill does not require all justices of the peace to be attorneys. The reason that I brought this bill is that I represent clients in criminal proceedings throughout Clark County, throughout our 11 justice courts, in front of 11 fantastic justices of the peace. And my clients are always surprised when they learn if, if they appeared in front of a justice of the peace who's not an attorney. They assume that justices of the peace are attorneys. They assume that the, the person presiding over their criminal case has already demonstrated some kind of knowledge of the law and a qualification to sit on the bench. Uh, we are lucky in Clark County that all of our justices of the peace are in fact very well qualified for the positions that they hold. And this is not an indictment upon any justice of the peace. It's a recognition that as we move forward, justices of the peace are going to retire and we are going to have to elect their replacements. And moving forward, we might not be so lucky. So I started talking to my clients, my colleagues, my colleagues at my law, in my law practice, my colleagues here at the Senate, um, my colleagues um, throughout this building, to think about what could we put into place 
something that would be um, not too onerous, that would not require um, reinventing the wheel, and that would not require JPs to be attorneys, but some way to demonstrate their qualifications to sit on the bench. Um, and that's when a group of us, <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't know. I don't know who, who gets credit for this. It may have been Elliot's idea. But basically, if you want to join the bar in Nevada, you have to do a couple of things. You have to go to law school. You have to pass a character and fitness test. The character and fitness test um, is like your criminal background check, and they'll contact your last employers and members of your family and ask if you're a good person and ask if you can uphold the law and things like that. And the State Bar of Nevada administers the character and fitness investigation only for people who are applying to join the Nevada Bar. The other two things that you have to do to become a member of the bar is pass the Nevada Bar, the three-day exam with the multiple choice questions and the essays and um, other various forms of torture, and, um, and complete that with a passing score in order to join the bar. The fourth thing that you have to do, you have to pass the MPRE, the Multi-State Professional Responsibility Examination. The MPRE covers every area of law and reviews the professional responsibilities of every attorney, whether it be the duty that they have to their client, the duty of candor they have to the court, um, the rules regarding handling clients' money or finances. All of that is contained within the MPRE. Um, you do not have to be a lawyer to sit for the MPRE. You do not have to be um, you don't have to pr provide a law school transcript. You don't have to provide uh, proof of a completion of law school courses to take the MPRE. There's no reason that people who seek to become justices of the peace in Nevada could not also sit for the MPRE. In preparation for this hearing, I reached out to the National Conference of Bo Bo Bar examiners, which is the organization that administers the MPRE. And I did learn that they do generally require somebody to be seeking admission to a bar association in order to take the MPRE. However, that's just a policy that they've put in place um, to, for, for whatever reason, that they're willing to revisit. And so um, there is no legal reason that people who are not intending to become lawyers couldn't take the MPRE. And at this point in time, uh, I'm in, in an ongoing conversation with the National Conference of Bar, Bar Examiners to ensure that their policy will reflect, if we pass SB 354, that individuals in Nevada seeking to become justices of the peace may also sit for the MPRE. Um, there is an amendment to the bill uh, based on a nuance that was brought to my attention. Um, regarding our most seasoned justices of the peace because the MPRE was not required for admission to the bar in Nevada until sometime in the mid-80s. So we do still have a few sitting JPs who joined the Nevada bar before uh, 1980 when the MPRE was first administered. So they have not passed the MPRE, but they are members of the bar. So that subsection 6 allows for those JPs to continue to serve in their roles here in the state of Nevada. And now I'd like to turn it over to uh, Mr. Mallon to provide some additional context, if that's okay with you. Uh, good afternoon, Vice Chair, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Elliot Mallon. Before I really get started, I brought some, uh, my nifty Nevada Constitution with me. Um, Article 6, Section 8 of the Nevada Constitution says the legislature shall determine the, the number of justices of the peace to be elected in each city and township of the state and shall fix by law their qualifications. So um, I want to also say I'm grateful to be here alongside Senator Scheibel, who graciously agreed to bring this bill forward. Like I said, Article 6, Section 8, Subsection 1 of the Nevada Constitution vests the power to set the qualifications of justice of the peace in this body in the legislature. AB 66, in the 2015 legislative session, uh, revisited and revised the requirements to be just of the peace, changing it to be that to permit non-attorneys in counties or townships with a population less than 100,000 to obtain the position. 
Nevada's justice courts are courts of limited jurisdiction uh, that hear criminal matters, which include traffic violations, small claims, evictions, and civil matters up to $15,000. The justice court also issues temporary and extended protective orders against domestic violence and or stalking and harassment. Nevada is one of eight states that currently allows non-attorney justices of the peace to convict in certain criminal courts. This can also raise some uh, Sixth Amendment right to a fair trial concern for individuals before these courts. Currently in Nevada, depending on the population of your township or county, your justice of the peace may not be an attorney. Their only formal statutory education requirement is to hold a high school diploma. However, there are rules, and I, I thank the stakeholders and the courts for providing these, um, the rules from the court that require justice of the peace to attend judicial college. Within these rules are nothing that requires our justices of the peace to take and pass an exam showing that they retained a sufficient level of knowledge to adequately address issues before them. We seek to set that standard with a minimal, minimalist approach. Um, it must be noted that this is not an attack on those justices of the peace in our rural counties. This is only saying that we should ensure that our citizens, our fellow Nevadans, are protected and given the opportunity to have a judiciary that works for them. A judiciary that they can trust knows the ethics and law required to make sound decisions on the bench. Today, 27 states permit non-attorneys to be justice of the peace, again, Nevada being one of them. And this bill does not seek to change that. What it intends to do is just establish a minimum level of comprehension of legal ethics at the absolute bare minimum. Nevadans deserve to know that the, those that have the ability to make life-altering decisions for them understand legal ethics. While many have said this bill does not go far enough, and I've heard from a lot of people who are angry that this, has, this didn't require them to be attorneys, I believe that this is a step in the right direction in helping protect Nevadans and making sure that our justice courts and our rural jurisdictions have justice of the peace. And again, let me make this very abundantly clear. This is about making sure that our justice of the peace are able to not only understand judicial ethics, but also spot ethical violations between attorneys and their clients. By having non-attorney justice of the peace take and pass the multi-state professional responsibility exam, we can accomplish this goal. That exam test, uh, tests not only a portion of judicial ethics, but also a wide array of legal ethics that will demonstrate sufficient knowledge of our justice of the peace to better serve all Nevadans. The MPRE is administered by the National Conference of Bar Examiners and is held three times a year. The exam is two hours and consists of 60 multiple choice questions based off of the uh, model rules of professional responsibilities. Um, those that take the exam can have it sent to their jurisdiction or request a score report from the NCBE uh, directly. Uh, it is based, again, on the model rules of professional responsibility and is not a high threshold to learn and pass. The exam does not require any legal knowledge to pass and only requires an understanding of those very rules. Further, if an individual feels that they need to study aid or help, uh, there are available programs for them that will help them obtain the required level of knowledge to pass the exam. Um, I have heard rumors uh, circulating that this amendment would require Justice of the Peace to take and pass the bar. That is not true. I want to make that, again, abundantly clear. We are not setting a standard that they have to take and pass the bar. Just the NPRE. You do not have to be an attorney. In fact, you're not even supposed to be an attorney to be able to take the MPRE today. It is before you even take the bar uh, by about at least a year. Um, we are working with NCBE. Uh, we've had multiple conversations, um, and they've been very gracious in uh, answering a lot of our questions. Um, and again, uh, as Senator Scheibel said, the amendment will essentially waive those who have passed the bar but not taken the MPRE. So those that have passed the bar prior to 1980. Uh, and thank you for hearing this today. Uh, I think this is a, a step forward in helping protect Nevadans across our state. Thank you. Does that conclude your presentation? Yes, I just want to mention also that um, I am open to discussions on this bill and amendments on this bill, and I have been since the beginning. Um, it's just, like I said in my presentation, it's a reflection of a, of a request from my constituents and my colleagues that we put some kind of stand higher standards into place and um, I am hopeful that we can do that in this session. All right, committee members, do we have any questions? Senator Stone? Thank you, uh, Chair, Vice Chair. Um, two questions. Will this affect uh, existing justices of the peace uh, when their terms are up, when their terms are up, will they have to go take this exam to resume their positions, number one? And number two, this is, uh, I know that there's other states that allow uh, judicial officers to not be lawyers, 
I find it very foreign in my mind because in California, not only do you have to be a lawyer or an attorney, but you have to have been a practicing attorney for 10 years before you can be running or appointed to by the governor to a much more simple system, I think, of uh, justice in California than we have here in Nevada. So uh, my second question is, how can somebody with just a high school education adjudicate legal issues without having a formal knowledge of judicial procedures and the laws of a state? I, I find that very troubling. <laughs> Melanie Scheibel, for the record, and uh, to your first point, um, I, um, I think it's important to note that we do have requirements for uh, district court judges. They do have to be practicing attorneys for 10 years. Part of the other issue that we're trying to address in this bill is an issue of um, parity between people in different parts of the state because if you do live in one of those more urban areas those justices of the peace have to be attorneys and have to be practicing for five years so we're not talking about just a small difference in the qualifications of justice of the peace in certain nevada cities versus others we're talking about four years of school and five years of practice um, I'm not sure that I can answer your second question. Senator Wynn. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I echo some of the sentiment about concerns about people making these important life-changing decisions um, that have not gone to law school. However, that is the current it's the current state of the law here in our state. I do have some concerns about this because it is a standardized test. It's a multiple choice test. Um, there are many people that I know that are some of the smartest people I know that are in this building, that are in this room, that have not only had to take this exam multiple times, but have also had to take the bar exam multiple times. And so I am I will tell you I'm just a little hesitant to tie that knowledge and that gauge of ethics to like a standardized test. Um, just, I guess that's more of a comment. And then my second thing is, is it just says passing score here. And I just happened to look on the national, um, the national conference of bar examiners and the NPRE. And I've noticed that all but all but one state actually requires this. I think it's Wyoming or Wisconsin. Wisconsin doesn't. Wisconsin and Puerto Rico don't require it. Um, but there are varying levels of scores, Nevada being one of the highest like scores, I think, short of California and Utah. Um, and then there are others. When you are describing a passing score, like is a passing score a 70? Is it, in our state, it's an 85? So I'm curious on that. And then I have another follow-up, but that's okay. Chair. Melanie Scheibel, for the record, um, I'll take your question first and then your comment. Um, the intention is for the score to be the same for justices of the peace as people applying to the Nevada bar. So right now it's 85. If the Nevada bar were to change that up or down, then the intent is that it, it, this statute would follow suit. As to your comment about having a better way to do this, um, I like I said, I am, I'm open to other options. Um, the reason that we settled on the MPRE, quite frankly, is that it didn't seem fair to put the onus on the state bar to do those character and fitness um, investigations for every person who either um, was elected as a JP or wanted to go get on the ballot as a JP. Um, and so it, it's the MPRE already exists and it and it is standardized which is part of the reason that it makes it easier than putting in a qualification like having good character or um, being knowledgeable of the law if we're not going to require a law degree then um, we have to have some other kind of or the purpose here is to create some other kind of objective measure of their qualifications to understand legal matters and I and I know that the MPRE doesn't understand doesn't test your legal knowledge or legal reasoning or legal capabilities um, but anybody who studies for the MPRE um, has to review a whole lot of law <laughs> and I and I think that it does accomplish the goal of ensuring that people have um, invested at least some time and thought into understanding our legal system. 
And then my, my next uh, kind of question is, and, you know, I honestly don't know and um, I don't have any interest in being a judge, but um, I know that in statute, all judges, including those that are elected and um, those that are appointed and those that um, did not go to law school and practice in our, our peer, you know, judges in these jurisdictions where there is this exception, they all have to go to the judicial college. Do you know if there are ethics? I know they teach them some other things, but are there ethics courses and other things that are required? Because I know that is already in statute. So I'm wondering, is that covered in there? Uh, Elliot, for Malin, for the record. So it's not in statute. It's in the court rules. But, um, and, and, and there is a requirement that there is a comprehensive legal ethics portion of the judicial college. However, there is no, nothing to test that knowledge. There's no objective standard at the end, um, as we've seen from what was provided. And that we're just aiming to provide an objective standard. Uh, Melanie Shebel, for the record, if the judicial college wanted to develop a test at the end of the, the judicial college and um, you know, work with us to write language requiring passage of that test or a certain score on that test, I would be more than happy to work with them on it. And then I guess my final um, question has to do with, um, and maybe you've had these conversations when you've been talking with the NPRE people, is, is, is that test something that is geared towards people that do have that like legal like training and you know three years of law school? Or is it a test that, I mean, you had mentioned that they weren't opposed to it. It's just normally, typically, people that have gone to law school that are taking that test. I'm just worried because, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, we have like a situation where you just have to have a high school diploma in order to be a judge in these areas. Are we, would, would, do they need that legal training in order to pass that type of test? Uh, Elliot Mallon, for the record, as somebody that's going to be sitting for the August MPRE, um, no. I, people that take the MPRE are ter- typically currently in law school. Um, they may take a professional responsibility class, which it, New Jersey actually allows them to waive if they've completed and passed a professional responsibility class, which is based off of the, profes- the model rules of professional responsibility. Um, so there is no legal training or requirement there's a there's a i mean the model rules and within the model rules are kind of the treatises as well as practice uh, tests that they can take and i'm sorry one last question if that's okay vice chair um is there a provision of when how like soon after taking the bench or being elected to that process that you have to complete this test and take it. I know you mentioned it was offered three times a year. Um, Is there a time period contemplated or is it just during the term of their service? Melanie Scheibel, for the record, it's not contemplated in the bill, but I would be open to clarifying. Additional questions from committee members? All right, not seeing any. We'll go ahead and open it up for testimony then. Anyone here in Carson City who'd like to testify in support of Senate Bill 354, come on up. Good afternoon. Uh, My name is Lilith Barron, L-I-L-I-T-H-B-A-R-A-N with the ACLU of Nevada. We are in support of this bill. Any consistency within the judicial system is um, welcomed and supported by the ACLU. Thank you. All right. Uh, We will go ahead and go then here to Carson for opposition testimony. Yeah, come on up. If you want to testify in opposition, please grab a seat. Uh, Don't forget to state your name for the record. Thank you. Good afternoon, Senator Harris. Thank you, members of the the committee. My name is Richard Glasson. It's spelled G-L-A-S-S-O-N. I'm here today in opposition to Senate Bill 354 because the MPRE, the Multi-State Professional Responsibility Examination, is irrelevant to most of the work that's done here by our judges. I do so in respect of the separation of powers, respect for the judicial branch, and access to justice for all. I'm appearing on behalf of my association, the Nevada Judges of Limited Jur- This is a joke chair, isn't it? It's also called the Nevada Judges Association, the NGLA. 
We represent all municipal court judges and justice court judges in the state of Nevada. This includes justices of the peace in those townships in Clark County, and I don't have my atlas with me, but from my memory, there are non-attorney judges in many of the townships in Clark County, including Laughlin, Moapa, Searchlight, Alamo, Caliente, um, possibly more. I'm a member of the Nevada Bar. I'm a member of the California Bar. I sit on the Character and Fitness Subcommittee of the Nevada State Bar Association Admissions Committee. I am an alternate member of the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. I'm past president of our association. I've been recognized as Judge of the Year and I've received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the NJLJ. I've recently received from the Supreme Court the Judicial Education Distinguished Faculty Certificate, which is hanging in my 93-year-old mother's living room proudly. I instruct on judicial ethics and judicial conduct for judges and court staff. I've been doing that for 18 years. My association represents all the municipal and justice court judges here in Nevada. Many of us serve in rural communities who do not have an abundance or a single lawyer that wants to run for our job. So many of us are not members of the bar. We've not taken the lawyer's MPRE, which is not an ethics examination. It's an examination on the rules of professional conduct for lawyers. That's in this blue book. Um, and it's a nice book, but there's the annotated code of judicial conduct for judges is what we abide by. It's like two different religious texts for two different completely different religions. We're not supposed to be lawyers. We're supposed to be acting as judges, not as lawyers. Attorney ethics are largely not relevant to judicial ethics. Now, constitutionally, since 1864, the education, the training and qualification of municipal court judges and justice of the peace has been directed by the Nevada Supreme Court. And for at least the last half century or so, the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline. Out of respect for our Supreme Court and the judicial branch, this legislature set minimum standards for municipal judges and justice court judges. A muni judge only has to live in the city and register to vote. A justice of the peace at least has to have a high school diploma. Then after appointment or election, the Supreme Court and the Commission on Judicial Discipline takes over for our education and discipline. Here's something from the Nevada Supreme Court's Judicial Education Unit. They note that, quote, the task of maintaining judicial competence depends on the willingness of the judiciary itself to assure that its members are knowledgeable and skilled in the study of law, study of law and its development, and that judges are trained in the application of legal principles and the art of judging to provide accurate and timely services to the public. Proper administration of justice can be accomplished through education. It increases efficiency, innovation, and effectiveness for the benefit of the people of Nevada. Judicial education is a primary means of advancing judicial competency and building public trust and confidence in our judiciary. Continuing judicial education requirements are mandated by statute and Supreme Court order for all Nevada judges including those approved by the Judicial Council of the State of Nevada. Additionally, there are continuing legal education requirements for attorney judges to maintain the Nevada Bar License. Those separate requirements are mandated by the State Bar of Nevada." Close quote. Now, initially upon appointment or election, two weeks of concentrated judicial code of conduct and judicial education at the National Judicial College are required right over the hill here in Reno. A second judicial ethics course is required within the first two years on the bench. We all undergo annual continuing judicial education for everything from ethics to evidence, but always on ethics. In addition, our education has other subject areas. We have subject areas for the just the peace, different than lawyers, orders of protection. We don't need to know about the ethics for divorce. We study the Confrontation Clause, not corporations. We test on protection orders against domestic violence, not probate. I see lawyers in court every session 
who know little or nothing about the Nevada Code of Judicial Conduct. Their knowledge of the MPRE. Sir, we generally have a two-minute testimony time limit. We have not put that on, but I'm hoping we can wrap your testimony up shortly. If you have written testimony, you can, you can submit that, but I'll just ask you to summarize quickly, please. Thanks. This bill requiring passage of the MPRE for lawyers is an intrusion on the traditional oversight of judicial legation by the judicial branch. The lawyer, excuse me, the judge questions on the MPRE are not for judges. They're for law students who want to work for judges. The, I was given a, a chance to look at what the MPRE says today about non uh, law school applicants attempting to take the exam. The MPRE is designed as one part of the professional legal licensing process. It is not intended to be taken by people who are not planning to use the score to apply for admission to the bar. Beginning in 2020, National Conference of Bar Examiners policies require candidates to certify that they are taking the MPRE for the sole purpose of admission or readmission to or retaining status as a member of the bar of a, of a participating jurisdiction. In the last 20 years, only 15 non-attorney judges have been written up by the Nevada Commission on Judicial Discipline as compared to 55 lawyer judges. The bill, I don't want to work for a judge. I am a judge, I teach judges. I've never taken the MPRE, neither did Chief Justice Hardesty or Chief Judge Gibbons of the Nevada Appellate Court. After, as of this afternoon, the MPRE is not open to non-law students, but maybe the MPRE approval is just a phone call away. We're not going to find competent citizens to sit in our townships, in these small townships and rural townships, if they have this type of a burden. This sudden intrusion into the way that we've been running our state judiciary for the last 150 years is going to create chaos. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Harris, members of the committee. <clears throat> For the record, my name is John McCormick. Uh, last name is M-C-C-O-R-M-I-C-K, Assistant Court Administrator at the uh, Nevada Supreme Court's AOC. Here to just put a couple concerns we have regarding this measure uh, on record and indicate that we uh, look forward to working with Senator Scheibel going forward. Uh, our concerns are that we are not necessarily sure that the MPRE is the correct instrument uh, to gauge just the peace qualifications. Um, and uh, I have been researching that issue. I haven't found too much. I think Kansas has a test, so I'm trying to get a copy of that. Um, but, uh, and also, uh, to sort of echo, echo what Judge Glasson said, we have some concern about maintaining adequate access to justice in rural jurisdictions, as there are a number of rural jurisdictions that don't necessarily have a whole lot of attorneys there, uh, nor attorneys who are gonna want, want to run for judge. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Harris. Uh, my name is Victor Miller, V-I-C-T-O-R-M-I-L-L-E-R. -L -L -E I'm a 42-year uh, member of the State Bar of Nevada. I am also a municipal judge and justice of the peace in Boulder City, Nevada, in Boulder Township. Uh, I've been a judge, limited jurisdiction judge for 39 years. Uh, currently, I am president of the Nevada, of Ju Nevada Judges of Limited Jurisdiction Association. And of that association, there uh, approximately 40% of that association are non-law -law trained um, uh, judges. Uh, even in my neck of the woods in uh, Clark County, of the 11 justice courts, Five of those courts are presided over by non-lawyer judges. Uh, those townships, as I've experienced uh, meeting and, and discussing and, and actually sitting in those courts uh, uh, as uh, substitute judges when they're not available, uh, 
as far as I can tell, there's not an attorney in, in those five townships, uh, let alone an attorney who would want to run for the position who doesn't have other things they're doing with their lives. Uh, if that, that experience has led me to, to see that uh, these non-lawyer judges are capable and professional, uh, even as uh, Senator uh, Scheibel indicated, there's no current um, judges that uh, are causing concerns. So uh, it, it leads, that begs the question, if there's not a problem, why are we trying to find a solution? At any rate, I believe that uh, this uh, measure would seriously affect the um, access to justice throughout the state. There are many places in the state where uh, a victim of domestic violence wants and needs a protective order, and if there's not a local judge that they can go and get that, they would have to go a long ways. Even in my little town in Boulder City, it's uh, 30 miles to go into district court to get a protective order. Um, usually a vi uh, someone who is a victim of domestic violence Oftentimes, the perpetrator has control of the car, uh, so there is actually, they'd have to ask the perpetrator, may I borrow the car to go get a protective order against you, uh, which is, you know, having justice available in your community is important. Additionally, not uh, unclear in this uh, uh, bill is how would this affect pro tems? Uh, judges that would sit uh, to cover the courts when the judge is not available. Uh, do they, would they need to be uh, so qualified by taking the MPRE, which would again seriously affect the access of justice? Uh, pro tems are important now because as you know, we uh, sir, are I'm gonna, doing, I'm gonna make a similar request. If you could please uh, summarize your, your ending, that would be great. And uh, also submit uh, your written com comments for the record if you have them. We are short on time, although every word you're saying is valuable. Thank you, Senator Harris. Uh, I will do so. The, uh, so the, um, we have to sit as judges uh, and review uh, pretrial uh, custody status within 48 hours, and so that is in need. We are need, in need as judges to have uh, pro tem judges that are qualified to sit for us. The additional question or comment I would make is that uh, why the MPRE uh, is my investigation showed that 2%, 2 percent, 2 to 8 percent of the test has to do with judicial ethics, and as Judge Glasson said, that's lawyers understanding judicial ethics. Uh, there has to be a better way, and we'd be happy to work with Judge Scheibel, our association, or excuse me, Senator Scheibel, uh, our association to, uh, to work and find a better way, find out what the concerns are in a better way. I do not believe that uh, the MPRA, MPRE is the way to do that, and hence we are in opposition to this bill. Thank you. Hello, um, this is Judge Harrington from Curry County. Um, um, it's H-E-R-R-I-N-G-T-O-N. -R -R and I uh, have to apologize, I was pressing star nine uh, when they asked for opposition, but um, I wasn't getting picked up for some reason. But um, I, am, uh, call, I am testifying in opposition. I'm a, a non-law trained judge from Story County. I sit on the Virginia Township Justice Court. Uh, I've been on the bench for 11 years. I was initially elected in 2012. At the time of my election... Hello, um, this is Judge Harrington from Story County. Uh, um, and sorry, I'm getting a little bit, bit of feedback, uh -huh. but um, before even... Uh, being elected, I had over 30 years of experience in the legal field, and I worked for three district attorneys, several different attorneys. I won a couple of awards for victim uh, units in uh, Story County, and since um, taking the office, I've developed a pretrial and alternative sentencing unit, and 
Um, I've uh, been the recipient of the 2020 uh, Certificate of, Adva of Advanced Achievement of Judicial Education. I'm opposing this bill, and um, I believe that there needs to be a lot of discussion done about incumbent, incumbent judges who have demonstrated professionalism and ethical behavior um, on the bench already. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, we'll go ahead and close the hearing then on Senate Bill 354.